My name is Rich Roll. I'm 49 years old. I'm a husband. I'm a father of four kids. People know that I am an ultra endurance athlete who's done some crazy stuff, but I think most people know me from the books that I've written and then the podcast, the Rich Roll Podcast. Are we on? Are we, are. are we rolling? Welcome to the Rich Roll Podcast, where each week I sit down with the outliers, the big thinkers across all categories of health, wellness, fitness, diet, nutrition. When I discovered drugs and alcohol, it was almost like uh, the solution to every problem that I never knew that I had. And so I went to rehab where I lived for 100 days, um, but that experience really saved my life. And as a newly sober person, I became initially very intent upon getting back into that grind of climbing the corporate ladder. And so by the time I was 39, from an outside perspective looking in on my life, my life looked really good. But on the inside, I felt like I was stuck in somebody else's life. I was about 50 pounds overweight. Uh, working as a corporate lawyer. It was late one evening uh, and was making my way up a simple flight of stairs uh, to go to sleep when I had to pause halfway. Um, I was winded, out of breath, tightness in my chest, and really fear in my heart. I thought I was on the precipice of having a heart attack. This was another one of those moments very similar to that day that I got sober. The first thing that I did was a seven-day vegetable juice cleanse, which was something, you know, I'd never gone 24 hours in my entire life without eating solid food. But ultimately, I fell into eating a plant-based diet, no animal products on my plate, and that really revitalized me. I actually think that eating a plant-based diet is not only uh, a fantastic way to achieve your athletic potential, it is also one dietary protocol that's been shown to prevent and even reverse a litany of chronic lifestyle diseases that are unnecessarily plaguing our society. With this resurgence of vitality, I actually had a desire to start working out again. And that's really what led me to this quest of trying to test what I'm capable of. And ultimately, that's what directed me into the world of ultra endurance sports and the Ultraman World Championships, which is a double Ironman distance uh, triathlon that circumnavigates the Big Island of Hawaii. Uh, and then in 2010, doing Epic Five. Ultra endurance sports has done nothing but improve my life. Remaining active, pushing my body, I think these are very healthy pursuits and I can tell you that I'm much healthier now than I was at 39, at 35, at even 30. It's easy to be calm and mindful when you're in a cave, but how do you do it in the world and how do you do it under extreme duress? That's what reveals character. As a kid, I was really sort of naturally insecure until I discovered drugs and alcohol and that was like the miracle salve that solved every problem that up to that point I didn't know that I had. I was a pretty broken guy. It was a, it was a pretty dire, dark scenario. I woke up one day, hung over, and decided I'm finally ready to do something about this. And went off to rehab, and I was able to actually grab onto that rope and start doing that interior work. That was my first introduction to meditation. I had this moment walking up these steps late one night where I had to pause and I had tightness in my chest and sweat on my brow and, and really fear in my heart that I was on the precipice of a very serious heart issue and it scared me. And that began the process of me once again reconfiguring my life. I became amazed at how resilient the human body is because for so many years I had beaten myself up with drugs and alcohol and fast food and workaholism and you, know, you name it. And I realized that if my body could bounce back this quickly from all the terrible <laughs> treatment that I've given it for most of my life, like what is it really capable of? That's what introduced me to Ultraman. For people that don't know, it's a double Ironman distance triathlon, 320 miles that over a three day period circumnavigates the entire big island of Hawaii. Uh, it's insane. It's very easy to get freaked out and think, oh my gosh, I can't do this. Who am I kidding? Or this is too painful. I want to just stop. So a race like Ultraman, it's crucial to be able to anchor yourself in the present moment. You have to be able to let go of what just happened and what is in your near future and focus on what is happening right now. And the more you can do that, then all of that fear kind of evaporates. 
Your thinking mind is that pesky guy on your shoulder who's trying to talk you out of everything. And so the trick becomes learning how to tap into um, a higher state of awareness so that you can be mindful and you can be present. And that's the place you want to be in as an athlete because that's when you're completely centered and focused. And I will say in all honesty that Headspace has been really great for helping me have a consistent approach to my practice because it is right on my phone and I put it down in the dock at the bottom. It's a constant reminder and it's so easily accessible to be able to do it wherever you find yourself. For somebody who's beginning to meditate, five minutes might seem like an eternity. And that's what I experienced during this training. Like I could get to a place where a seven hour ride didn't feel like that long. And that's really a mental practice. Yes, there's physical discomfort and the training is athletic and physical, but truly a race like Ultraman um, all comes down to your mental, emotional, and spiritual state. And that is really the defining characteristic that would define any, any champion in that regard.